Does the level 1 biology exam scare you? Well, it shouldn't. Here's some examples of the questions you'll be asked and how you should answer them. Here's the general approach to bio questions. Carefully read the question and focus on what is actually being asked. Don't get overwhelmed or carried away with other ideas. You're being asked to show that you understand one or two specific ideas, so it's best to just explain or describe these as clearly as you can. It's likely you'll get a question about Punnett squares and pedigree charts. Questions like these are all essentially the same. You need to show that you understand the definitions and relationships between terms like genotype, allele, dominant and recessive by making use of the chart. This question asks us about a disease that is passed on by the dominant allele shown by an uppercase D. Using big D and little d gives the two genotypes of a person who has the disease. Let's think clearly. What do we know about dominant alleles? They are always expressed, even when there's a recessive allele in the genotype. That's why they're called dominant. So we could have two dominant alleles in the genotype, which is called homozygous dominant. Homo meaning the same, and the dominant meaning that the dominant allele is expressed. We could also have one dominant and one recessive allele, which is called heterozygous dominant. Here, hetero means different, and again the dominant means that the dominant allele is expressed. So those are our answers. Our next question tests our knowledge of the pedigree chart. Question asks, what is the genotype of individual 10? Explain using evidence from both the parents and the children. We can see from the key that individual 10 is an affected female, so she must have the dominant allele. What we need to work out now is whether her genotype is homozygous dominant or heterozygous dominant, and we can do this by looking at her parents and her children. Her mother is unaffected, and so the genotype here must be homozygous recessive. Thinking about Punnett squares, we can see that if her mother is homozygous recessive, then she must have a recessive allele from her mother in her genotype. So if individual 10 is affected, she must have at least one dominant allele, and from her mother she must also have at least one recessive allele. This means she must be heterozygous dominant. Let's check if we've answered the question. Not quite. We haven't given any evidence using the children of individual 10. Let's look at them. We can see three are affected and one is unaffected. We can also see that the father of these children is unaffected, and so he must be homozygous recessive. Both of his alleles are recessive. This means all the children have at least one recessive allele from their dad. But we can see that there are both affected and unaffected children. So the mother, individual 10, must have a dominant and a recessive allele. This evidence confirms our answer from before, that the mother is heterozygous dominant. We've now fully answered the question. See how keeping a clear head and working systematically through the question helped us find the answer? Let's now look at a question that requires a wordier answer. There is a species of insect that has both a light-coloured phenotype and a dark-coloured phenotype, and lives on both light and dark-coloured trees. Both types of insect are eaten by birds. If the environment changes so that only dark-coloured trees grow, how does the phenotype ratio change? Let's think about this question visually. There is a species of insect that has both a light-coloured phenotype and a dark-coloured phenotype, and lives on both light and dark-coloured trees. Both types of insect are eaten by birds. If the environment changes so that only dark-coloured trees grow, how does the phenotype ratio change? The answer now seems obvious. Let's word the answer carefully. We might write it like this. The change in environment causes the dark-coloured insects to have a survival advantage over the light-coloured insects, as they are able to camouflage from the birds. Because they are far more likely to survive, this means they are far more likely to mate and produce dark-coloured offspring. Have we answered the question yet? Not quite. We need to refer to how the phenotype ratio has changed. Let's add that. We need to remember to define the term phenotype. The phenotype is the physical expression of a gene. The phenotype ratio compares the amount of insects with one phenotype 
to their mount with the other phenotype. Because there are now more dark coloured insects, the phenotype ratio has increased over time on the side of dark coloured insects. See, not too hard eh? As long as we carefully explain ourselves, we're going to do a good job.